99% of developers don't get x86. There's a secret language spoken inside your computer, a language that dictates everything. And 99% of the people writing the software we use every day don't understand it. It's the heart of a silent war between two competing philosophies. In one corner, the complex, powerful giant that has dominated for years, x86. In the other, the nimble, efficient challenger that took over our phones and is now knocking on your desktop's door, ARM. This isn't just about which chip is in your laptop. This is about a fundamental divide in how machines think. This isn't just about Intel versus Apple, a battle of megacorps. But you are a software engineer and an architect who's never even seen a blueprint. You build logic every day on a foundation that you do not understand. It's time to understand the ground that you're building upon. What are x86 and ARM? x86 and ARM are two fundamentally different CPU architectures, formerly known as Instruction Set Architectures, or ISAs. An ISA defines how machine code, or binary instructions, is interpreted by the processor, essentially it's the low-level contract between software and hardware. x86, developed by Intel and later extended by AMD, has been the backbone of personal computing since the late 20th century, originally used in the IBM PC. ARM, on the other hand, was developed in the 1980s with a focus on simplicity and low power consumption, gaining traction in the embedded and mobile markets. While x86 is synonymous with the Wintel or Windows plus Intel world, ARM has powered billions of smartphones and is now expanding into laptops and servers. Next, we have to talk about the philosophical divide between CISC and RISC. x86 uses CISC, or Complex Instruction Set Computing, which means the architecture provides a large and rich set of instructions. Some of these instructions can do multiple operations, for example load, add, store, all in one command. This reduces the number of lines in assembly code but makes the chip design much more complicated. It also creates a reliance on microcode for decoding these complex instructions. ARM uses RISC, or Reduced Instruction Set computing, which emphasizes a small orthogonal instruction set, meaning fewer instructions, each doing one task very quickly and predictably. RISC encourages software, for example compilers and programmers, to handle complexity rather than the hardware itself. The simplicity of ARM leads to faster instruction pipelines, smaller die sizes, and lower power usage. The die size simply refers to the physical area of an integrated circuit chip, for example its physical dimensions. This philosophical divide explains why ARM is prevalent in battery-sensitive devices while x86 dominates environments that require high single-threaded performance and broad software compatibility. Now let's talk about performance and efficiency. x86 processors, especially Intel Core and AMD Ryzen or EPYC, offer high clock speeds, large caches, and speculative execution techniques that boost performance in general purpose and compute heavy applications. They're used in gaming PCs, workstations, and servers. However, these chips consume significantly more power and produce more heat, requiring large cooling stations. In contrast, ARM chips are designed from the ground up to be power efficient by using fewer transistors, simpler instruction decode units, and highly efficient cores, they achieve longer battery life and lower thermal output. Apple's M series chips, for example, M1, M2, and M3 have shown that ARM chips can compete head to head with x86 chips in performance while dramatically outperforming them in efficiency. This enables fanless designs and longer battery life in laptops. How about the ecosystem and compatibility of x86 versus ARM. x86 benefits from decades of entrenched support in operating systems, drivers, and software tooling. Microsoft Windows, Adobe Creative Suite, many games and enterprise workloads like Excel macros or SAP environments are deeply tied to x86 binaries. However, this compatibility comes with a trade-off. Maintaining backward compatibility has burdened x86 with a lot of architectural complexity. ARM, in contrast, dominates in platforms like Android, iOS, and embedded systems, for example Raspberry Pi, routers, smart TVs, and car info Containment. Though historically fragmented due to vendor-specific customizations, ARM has become more standardized with efforts like ARM v8, ARM v9, and OS-level support, for example from Mac OS, Windows on ARM, and Ubuntu ARM. The rise of cross-platform development like Electron, Flutter, or web apps, and cloud computing is reducing the lock-in effect of x86, allowing ARM to gain ground rapidly. Now give me a moment to talk about instruction set and the execution model. x86 supports variable length instructions from 1 to 15 bytes, meaning the CPU must include complex logic to parse and decode them. This variability introduces overhead but allows dense encoding of operations. x86 CPUs also include specialized legacy instructions, for example x87 floating point, MMX, AVX, etc. that can still run for backward compatibility. ARM, in contrast, uses fixed length 32-bit instructions that simplify the decode stage and improve pipeline predictability. This makes out-of-order execution, superscalar designs, and low-power microarchitecture easier to implement efficiently. 
Modern ARM cores support SIMD extensions and advanced features like trust zones, pointer authentication, and speculative execution protection. Alright, before we jump back into it, I want to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Monday.com, for helping me and my team stay organized. If you're like what I used to be, your project management is probably a chaotic mix of emails, spreadsheets, and messaging apps. It makes it so hard to track tasks, communication gets lost, and you never have clear visibility on where a project truly stands. It's very messy. This is why Monday.com has been such a lifesaver. It's a super intuitive work management platform that puts everything in one place. First, you have these incredibly customizable boards. You can set them up exactly how your team works, assigning tasks, and tracking progress visually. And speaking of visuals, you can switch between views whenever you want, from a Kanban board to a Gantt chart or a calendar view, so everyone understands the project timeline instantly. The collaboration tools are amazing. We can comment directly on tasks, share files, and keep all communication centralized, which means no more digging through emails. But my personal favorite feature is the automation. You can set up rules to handle repetitive work, like moving a task to the next stage or sending a notification when a deadline is approaching. It saves a massive amount of time. Plus, it integrates with tools we already use like Slack and Google Drive, making our entire workflow seamless. By bringing organization, collaboration, and automation into one platform, Monday.com helps us save time, reduce errors, and focus on what really matters. To all my viewers, you can try Monday.com for free by using the link in the description down below. A trust zone, often referred to as a trusted execution environment or TEE, is a secure area within a device's main processor. This isolated environment runs its own simplified operating system separate from the main OS like Android or Windows. This separation ensures that sensitive data and critical operations such as fingerprint authentication or mobile payments remain protected even if the main OS is compromised by malware. Pointer authentication is a security feature designed to prevent memory corruption vulnerabilities such as buffer overflows and return-oriented programming attacks. It works by attaching a cryptographic signature known as a pointer authentication code or PAC to a program's pointers. When a program creates a pointer, a PAC is generated and stored in the unused high-order bits of the pointer's memory address. Before the pointer is used to access memory, the processor verifies this PAC. If the signature is invalid, meaning the pointer has been tampered with, the processor will raise an exception, effectively shutting down the malicious activity before it can cause any harm. I'll also explain speculative execution protection, but first let me explain speculative execution. Speculative execution is a performance optimization technique used by modern processors to predict and execute instructions before they are officially needed. While this boosts speed, it can also create security vulnerabilities such as Spectre and Meltdown, where attackers can trick the processor into revealing sensitive information from protected memory. Speculative execution protection refers to a set of hardware and software mitigations designed to counter these vulnerabilities. These these protections work by placing restrictions on speculative execution, for instance by preventing the processor from making certain types of predictions or by flushing sensitive data from the cache after speculative operations. Okay, now who builds them? x86 is a closed ecosystem. Only Intel and AMD are legally permitted to design and manufacture x86 processors. This limits architectural innovation to what those two companies choose to pursue and keeps designs relatively homogenous. ARM, on the other hand, is a licensing-based model. ARM Holdings doesn't manufacture chips. It licenses cores, for example, Cortex-A and Cortex-X, or architecture, for example, ARM v9, to other companies. This allows firms like Apple, Qualcomm, NVIDIA, Amazon via Graviton, and Google via Tensor to build custom chips tailored for specific applications. Apple's chips, for example, include integrated ML accelerators, advanced memory controllers, and shared memory between CPU and GPU, all optimized for macOS and iOS. This has led to much faster innovation and specialization in the ARM ecosystem. How about the future trends? The future of computing is moving towards heterogeneous, energy-aware, and specialized architectures, and ARM is well-positioned here. Apple's M-series chips prove that ARM can deliver high-end desktop performance, and companies like Microsoft and Google are investing heavily in ARM-based chips for laptops and servers. On the x86 side, Intel and AMD are innovating with hybrid architectures, Intel's P-cores and E-cores, 3D stacking, and AI acceleration. Internally, both architectures use pipelining, speculative execution, and out-of-order execution to improve performance, but x86 often pays a higher cost for instruction decoding and legacy behavior. ARM's simpler structure enables faster instruction fetch and decode with fewer pipeline flushes and simpler scheduling logic. In CPU pipelining, a pipeline flush is the process of discarding partially executed instructions from the pipeline when a branch or other control flow change occurs, or when data used by instructions in the pipeline might have been invalidated. This ensures that the CPU executes the correct sequence of instructions by clearing out the instructions fetched along the wrong path and fetching new instructions from the correct location. 
Pipelining breaks down instructions into stages, fetch, decode, execute, write back, that can be executed simultaneously, similar to an assembly line. This allows multiple instructions to be in different stages of execution at the same time, and increases overall instruction throughput, meaning more instructions can be processed per unit of time. Out-of-order execution further optimizes this by allowing instructions to be processed in a different order than they appear in the program. This is done by identifying and prioritizing instructions that are ready to execute, even if earlier instructions are not yet complete. It can improve performance by avoiding stalls caused by data dependencies or other delays. Speculative execution predicts the outcome of branching instructions, for example, if-else statements. It executes instructions along the predicted path even before the branch condition is fully evaluated. This minimizes pipeline stalls by ensuring that the next instruction set is ready and waiting, assuming the prediction is correct. If the prediction is incorrect, the executed instructions are discarded and the correct path is followed. Here's the TLDR. Think of x86 as a Swiss army knife. Highly capable, familiar, and loaded with features, but bulky and power hungry. ARM is like a sleek, purpose-built scalpel, optimized for a specific task, incredibly efficient, and increasingly versatile. Whether you choose x86 or ARM depends on your priorities, raw compute power and legacy support, or energy efficiency and scalability. And this is where CodeCrafters comes in. This platform provides interactive tools to build developer tooling from scratch. There are a number of courses that teach building Git from scratch, building an in-memory Redis database, an HTTP web server, your own Docker, your own DNS server, and many others. I personally love that there is built-in support for over 20 different languages. My favorite, of course, is Golang, but I would highly recommend trying a newer language like Zig as well. I'm excited to announce that I'm partnering with CodeCrafters to offer all my viewers 40% off. For more details, you can find a link in the description down below as well as the pinned comment.